Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I have a request, and I hope that I can answer this question as best as I possibly could. It's been a long day, and guys, oh, I've been going over contracts and quotes and all this other stuff, so my brain might be a little finagled, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and go over uh, Biomed salaries and different paths you can take to uh, make various quantities of money. Alright, so um, we all know, or you should know, that there's a Biomed 1, 2, 3, technically there's a Biomed 4, and from there it goes into Biomed Manager and Biomed Supervisor, but there are different modalities, they call it modalities, different areas of specialty that you can go into as a Biomed, and they do make various amounts of money. So, uh... Generally, on the low end, if you get into patient monitoring and or infusion pumps and hell, I've even seen if you get into dialysis, um, you're going to make less than an average biomed. Um, and that's only because a lot of dialysis companies and stuff, they, I think they underpay. So, uh, but if you do dialysis in a hospital, you can, you can make some pretty reasonable money. So, uh, dialysis is a specialty. It is a modality. Um, let's see, what other ones are there? Obviously, there's imaging. And imaging, I, I should do a whole other video on imaging because you can break it off. There's, there's ultrasound, there is uh, CT, there's MR, there's, um, let's see, what else is there? There's bone densitometers, and then there's portable x-ray, which is a whole other group. Um, let's see, what other type of imaging are there? There's uh, nuclear accelerators. There's uh, nuclear gamma cameras. I mean, these, these are all different, different areas of imaging. So just because somebody says they do imaging, it's like, okay, so what aspect? <laughs> um, because different ones do make different amounts of money. And that is usually based off of the cost of the education the years of experience of the education and um, the cost of the contracts. So let's take uh, MRI. All right, <laughs> this is going to be a good one. So MRI, why do MRI technicians get paid so much compared to other modalities? Well, MRIs are very complex. There's a risk factor there because, I mean, the magnet is always on, as they say. Um, MRI technicians get paid a certain amount because the education is expensive and it's usually very model specific. So if you know somebody that is Siemens trained or Toshiba trained or whatnot and you have Toshiba um, imaging, that person's going to make more money for that hospital. All right. But for MRI specifically, let me go and tell you about one person a long time ago. Um, we had one MRI machine at our facility. We had one technician and this guy, he would come and go at his leisure. Um, he wouldn't come in early in the morning. He'd show up at like 9 a.m. He'd leave at like 1 p.m. So if you could do the math, it's only like three or four hours every day. And um, the reason why he could do that is because the cost of the MRI contract. The full service contract and then the first look, because when, when the contract was up for renewal, I seen the numbers. And if we did a first look contract versus a full service contract, full service was going to be more than this technician's salary, just in the step down from full service to first look. So he could literally do almost nothing, and the hospital is still saving money just for having him on the payroll. True story. So, um... Anyway, uh, so there, there, MRI is a specialty. Um, cath labs is another imaging specialty, okay? And these are all things that you can get specially trained on. Um, I put an ad out because uh, MD, or, or, um, MD Anderson Hospital over here, um, the director reached out to me and asked if I could help find a good biomed to fill the position because he was looking to train a biomed into linear accelerator. So I put out uh, an ad for that. I myself would have loved to do that position. <laughs> I would have. Uh, just the challenge of it. I, I would have loved linear accelerators, um, which is, they're very complex machines when you get into the shutters and 
you know, all the different leaves that move around in the collimator and stuff. They're, they're, they're fun little devices. But um, the size of uh, a bus, you know, <laughs> so they're not really that little. Um, definitely bigger than a Volkswagen. But there are different areas. You can go into chemistry. And when you go into chemistry analyzers, usually it's going to be very manufacturer specific. So if you are Becton and Coulter trained, well, yes, you can fix Becton and Coulter analyzers at your facility, no problem. Um, I have no idea about the contract because a lot of those are on reagent rental contracts, which means if you buy the reagents or a certain quantity of consumables, then you get uh, the service at a discounted rate or for free or whatever. So um, you can go into chemistry. Uh, let's see, what other specialties are there? Well, there's my specialty, which is surgery. Um, and I, I did surgery and audio video systems and medical networking. So um, I have done that for a lot of years. And one of the reasons that a lot of people don't like surgery is because it's usually high tempo and usually a higher stress level, especially when things are going wrong. Um, and you have to be pretty meticulous and you have to dress out. You know, obviously you have to change your garb every single day. Uh, but I love that. I absolutely love the challenge associated with that. So um, surgery is uh, one of the specialties. Um, I guess some people might argue this one out, but uh, pediatrics is a specialty I consider because you have NICU, which is, it's very special test equipment. You have the infant incubators and, and stuff like that. They're very specialized and you have to really know what you're doing when you do those tests. So I, I consider pediatrics to be like a specialty. Um, and what a fun specialty that is. Cause I, I love, you know, being around families and stuff. Um, let's see, what other specialties are there? There's obviously, um, medical networking. Um, you could go into that. That is a, an emerging specialty. And, uh, that is, that person's like a liaison between biomed and the IT crowd. So having that specialized position, if your facility has a specialized position for medical networking, good on you. Uh, you're already ahead. Some places they say they'll never need it and they end up wasting a lot of time and nobody knows the network well enough and you know how it goes. So um, let's see, there's those specialties. What other specialties do we have? Um, there's almost always anesthesia, which is a specialty uh, because you have to be special trained in order to do anesthesia. And usually anesthesia guys don't really partake and OR equipment because the anesthesia is if you're at a big facility like I've been at you've got plenty of work right? uh, smaller facilities if you do anesthesia you will also be doing ORPMs but um, the anesthesia is not just the anesthesia machine but also the patient monitor um, the variety of uh, uh, vaporizers you're, you're gonna test all that out and also check on obviously the uh, medical network that is attached to your anesthesia machine because it's vital that that is in prime condition as well. Uh, so you do anesthesia and then we have ventilator experts. Your ventilator experts are usually going to be trained in whatever majority model is at your facility. Those guys um, usually don't partake in other types of specialties. Um, usually ventilator guys, especially at larger facilities, that's what you're doing. You're doing ventilators all day. And you know the crazy thing? It's never been my cup of tea, but the ventilator guys, they almost always love what they do. It's crazy. Now, um, I, I can't really go into salary on all these. Uh, obviously, like I said, some positions like dialysis and stuff, um, they generally get less. Uh, but um, I would say at the very top is going to be your imaging engineers. And then maybe your medical networking specialist. And uh, let's see, I know surgery gets usually paid pretty well. Um, if you are an experienced chemistry analyzer repair, uh, that will get you some good points. Um, let's see. The other specialties are generally going to be uh, a lower, lower on the spectrum. And of course, it depends on the person and it depends on the market and the type of facility. Because imagine if you are really good at uh, infusion pumps and you work at a radiation oncology, which is, you know, they use um, infusion pumps to administer 
radioactive drugs and stuff. Um, obviously, if you're really good at medical networking and uh, infusion pumps, you could probably make some pretty good money at those places. But um, guys, there, there's no real dollar figure I can tell you because it is every single facility has different needs. And if you are the technician that can fulfill those needs, they're gonna pay you well. Um, what I can tell you is that Biomed Ones generally make between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, and that's that's across the country. You know, obviously, in your really expensive places to live, that's not going to be the case. But um, in all your average um, cost of living places, yeah, you're going to make forty to fifty thousand. Yeah, plus or minus five. Um, after that, your Biomed Twos, Biomed Twos can make. I would say between fifty and sixty thousand a year. That's that's pretty average, plus or minus five k, depending on your cost of living. And then biomed threes are where it really spreads out, and this is where it really helps to develop your resume and your credentials. Because when you get to biomed three, things really space out. Um, I've known biomed threes that make sixty k a year. And I've known Biomed 3s that make over $100,000 a year, easily. So, uh, and they, these are at average cost of living, all right? So it's not even that they're in New York City or something. No, average cost of living. It's just if you have a stacked resume and a really good job experience, work-based experience, you can make a lot of money as a Biomed 3. But some places divvy it off and Biomed 3, it, it gets capped. So your average Biomed 3 is going to make between... Sixty thousand and eighty-five thousand dollars a year. It's a big spread, and that eighty-five k isn't the cap. It depends on your facility. Some places have Biomed fours, to which Biomed four is going to be probably seventy k to one hundred and twenty k. It's moved over, so and and that's at average cost of living. You move to um, some bigger cities, and that changes. Um, you know, Biomed managers, that's completely across the spectrum. I, I couldn't even um, give you a number. Um, the upper echelon of Biomed 3 and Biomed 4 are where the lower managers start. And managers get a lot of kicks. Uh, sometimes they get, like, um, bonuses if they meet their numbers and stuff like that. Whereas general Biomeds, um, Biomeds in general, almost never get bonuses. But managers often do. So, um... There, there is a spectrum of, of salaries across the board, and so I can't even like begin to tell you about that. But I can tell you that never give up and always, always try to get what you believe you're worth. And don't go over what you think you're worth. The reason being is because they're going to expect that level of work out of you. So if you say I'm worth $85,000 a year, you better be able to put out $85,000 a year worth of productivity. And I, I just know a lot of biomeds couldn't or wouldn't. So um, just remember that, especially when you go third party, like uh, my company, Phoebe, um, the more money you get, the more that has to be factored into your productivity. So if you can only service infusion pumps, well, you know, you have to be doing a hell of a lot of infusion pumps to afford 80K a year, you know? So um, it's, it's, it's not even practical. So that's why it pays to study and to uh, learn up on these more, more specialized modalities because those generally are gonna cost more for the OEM to come in and do those repairs. So if they offset that by training somebody in-house, that person's going to get paid more because you just offset a real cost. Um, we don't; these costs don't just come out of the bucket. All right. When we talk about average salaries, your average salary is based on the cost that it would take for a hospital to contract out your job, x amount of dollars, and your productivity. So if they can contract out your job, they would. You're there to save money and reduce downtime. All right. So that is the key to all biomeds. You have to remember that go and get what you're worth, but at the same time, remember, if you're in over your head, you're going to sink your ship, and everybody's going to know, and this is a small community, so these guys that are chasing after crazy dollar figures, you, you probably aren't even worth that, 
and I, I don't, you, I'm not saying you'll never be worth that. I'm saying you're not worth that at the moment because I know people that will do some crazy work for reasonable costs and you're competing with them. All right. So guys, uh, that's as close as I can do. Uh, I was thinking about this on the drive home, what type of specialties are in biomed and, um, generally the pay scales and that's as close as I can come. It's going to be such a varied, um, a varied amount of money. So um, anyway, guys, I'm going to look to do uh, other videos on specialties of biomeds. And in that, I'm going to um, try and like do video clips and stuff of what each thing does. Because if I say laboratory chemistry analyzer, a lot of people probably don't know what that is. All right. So I would like to do little uh, B-roll video clips along with describing what those specialties are. Because I want, to, I want to give you guys options, all right? But uh, just remember, no one path is right. And a lot of people that tell you, like, you can't do this or you'll never get much money for doing that, don't listen to them, all right? Don't listen to it. Just just hustle. Do, do your job. Do it well. And hustle and be trainable, all right? Thanks for watching, guys.